Hey, how you doing? I've been wanting to build one of these solar power packs for a while now, and well, I have the time. You know, get time to get her done. So, uh, what I have here is the small rigid box. And uh, while I was doing research for this project, I came across two other guys that used this exact same box. And uh, the one guy I was going, oh my God, it's a nightmare. Uh, the contours in the body and the gussets in the lid and the goofiness on the side, it just makes it impossible to build it. It's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so I was like kind of mortified. I was like, oh, do I really want to use the box? But I was not deterred because I had two of these boxes in the shop and I was bound to determine to use one of them. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, for AC power, I'll be using this Ames Power Pure Sine Wave Inverter. It's 300 watts. Uh, of all the cheap, small, pure sine wave inverters, Ames Power had the cleanest power. I did a ton of research. Uh, Ames Power had good circuitry, good clean power. I don't have a problem plugging a computer into this inverter at all. I know 300 watts isn't a lot of power, but uh, the AC power isn't really the primary focus of this box. Uh, the most I'll be using this for is uh, some battery chargers or if I decide to drag these lights around with me. Uh, these are 30 watt lights and they're at 10%. So uh, no problem. Be lots of power. And uh, I don't need a big fancy charge controller. This is a Jenison 10 amp charge controller. It's a MPPT charge controller, good for lithium batteries. And uh, it's nice and small and it'll fit in that box, no problem at all. Uh, for a battery, I'll be using this 30 amp hour battery. Actually, I'll be using two 30 amp hour batteries. And uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna shoehorn all this in there with gauges and switches and lights that you would expect and uh, should be fun. Stick around. I love a challenge. No self-respecting pack rat would be caught dead without a scrap metal bin. Hmm. Wonder if I have some more of these. Okay, so this is what I have so far. I just built a simple little tray. I used roofing nails, because they have the flattest heads of anything. And then I just pounded them over on the backside. It's a little crude, but nobody's ever gonna see it. All right, so here's where we're at. Uh, I powder coated everything, made it look nice. Painted the tray, bolted everything down. Used these really nice little black steel stud screws that I have. And I went through the case, through the strap, into the plywood, three on each side, not going anywhere. So while I was waiting for all the powder coating to cool off, I cut myself a nice chunk of aluminum and that's going to go right there like that. And now that ha that charge controller has something nice to sit on and if the charge controller decides to heat up at all, the aluminum will act as a heat sink. So the screws I used were big flathead 3-8 screws and I did end up using little washers just to get them flush with the top just to help reduce any sharp edges. I did the same with the charge controller. I may need to get that out of there at some point so I just uh, tapped the plate and screwed them in. Sometimes a pen just won't work. Okay, the moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's beautiful.
Okay, it's the next day, and uh, yesterday was a good day for ciphering and soldering. I got a lot done. I'm hoping to get a lot done today. We'll see. I'm still waiting on some parts. Uh, the main one I need today is the relay. Today is relay day. Amazon Santa just showed up. Okay, I'm a little behind on my camera work, so I thought I'd better catch up here. Uh, I have the master switch installed. I have the master relay installed. The wiring... Not too rat nasty. And the relay goes between the battery and the main uh, fuse block here. Uh, oh, I have my charger installed. It's, uh, well, installed. It's plugged into the SEA port on the bottom here. And because this SEA port doubles as an output, it's on the switch. So as soon as I hit the switch, the charger is allowed to, to start charging the battery. Uh, all the lights, if I can find the switch, all the lights work as they should. All gauges work as they should. Uh, even the little solar switch is working, but it's the shunt's not hooked up, so it's doing nothing. So uh, the next thing to do is hook this relay up, and that goes between the inverter and the battery. And that's just so that I can have a switch on the uh, outside of the box to turn the inverter on. All right, and away we go. There's another one. Another one bites the dust. That's t two in six months. Those things just don't last. As much as I like them, they don't last. This one here I made, and it rocks. It really is a great little soldering iron. Can I say we're coming down to the wire now? Oh, that's gold. That's solid gold, Jerry. Okay, update time. I'm working on this little gauge here in the front. And this gauge only comes on when there's a solar panel plugged into this SEA port on the side here. Now because it's dark out, I'm going to use my power supply hooked onto this SEA connector to simulate a solar panel. So when said solar panel gets plugged in, the gauge comes on and starts reading voltage coming from the panel. It's reading zero amps right now because the circuit is open between the charge controller and the battery. As soon as I flip the switch, closes the circuit, and that is the amperage going from the charge controller to the battery. So, everything's working the way it's supposed to. Just have to clean up the wires and solder everything together. Okay, so here's where we're at. This gauge is now hooked up. And all the wires are tucked away. Looks good. The batteries are connected. Uh, the very last thing there is, is the switch for this relay for the inverter. Oh. I have to go to number five. The number five orange. I haven't been there in a long time. Holy cow. Write down in the comments if you've ever been to the number five orange. Absolutely coming down to the wire now. I think this is the last wire. Pretty sure. This is the very last wire. Alright, I think Okay, here's the, uh, here, I'll plug something in to, uh,
celebrate the momentous occasion. You see that? Yeah, okay. There we go. Big switch. It's either going to go up in a puff of smoke or this light's going on. <laughs> okay, so I set it up on my barbecue. I uh, grabbed a couple of 15 watt panels out of the back room. The sun uh, is extremely low in the sky. It's the middle of winter here, middle of February. And uh, there's a little bit of haze, but uh, we'll see what it gives us. Whoa, just over an amp. That's awesome. All right, well, at least I know it works. All right, that was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I thought I'd do a walkthrough before I end the video here, starting with the solar section. You saw that if I plug a solar panel into this SAE port, it uh, turns this gauge on, turn this switch on, and it connects the charge controller to the batteries, and the batteries start charging. Now the reason I have this switch is that there's a light on the charge controller, and it's always blinking. So that's a parasitic draw that I don't need when I'm not using the box. So turn the switch off, disconnects the charge controller from the batteries, and end of draw. Uh, I should mention that the charge controller is only good for 140 watts. So I was thinking of picking up a folding 100 watt panel to go with this box. And uh, this solar section here is completely independent of uh, any other sections, like the power section of the box. And the master switch for the box is here. That turns everything else on. Below the master switch is a 12 volt power port. Beside the master switch is the inverter switch that you saw in action earlier. There's a USB port on the front of the box that's plugged into the inverter and only works when the inverter is on. Uh, below the inverter switch is another switch and it's a light switch for these crazy lights. Now what these are are undercarriage lights and they're metal, they're thin, they have three LEDs in them. They're stupid bright. Uh, they draw an amp and a half but it's totally worth it. Above the light is a uh, voltmeter with two USB ports. Above that in the lid is another two USB charging ports and I know it's a little off center, I'm not sure what happened there. Down here is another uh, port power port, it's an SAE power port, uh, 12 volt out, but it doubles as a charging port. If I plug a lithium charger into that, it'll charge the batteries as long as the master switch is on. The only thing on the back side is the uh, AC outlets, and again I know 300 watts isn't a ton of power, but it's enough for a laptop, enough for some lights or uh, MPF battery chargers. Uh, yeah they'll get used. On the other side of the box is another switch for another one of these crazy bright lights and the solar power port. Uh, on the front of the box in the lid here is uh, overall voltage and uh, a temperature meter. Now there's a thermistor on the inverter and a thermistor on the charge controller and this just allows me to monitor the temperatures uh, when the box is closed like this if something gets a little warm, I'll see it and I'll be able to shut it down or else open the lid and uh, let some air in. So, that's it. Uh, since you made it this far, you can give me a big old thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And consider subscribing because I'm always doing stuff like this. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.